Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I feel like it has been a while since we've gotten to hang out and to chat. So today is going to be a bit of a catch up video. I've been filming little clips here and there in the last couple of weeks of some of the things we've been doing, but we have just been overwhelmingly busy, crazy busy. And if you're new around here or you don't already follow me on Instagram, that's the place to kind of keep up with what's going on between videos or maybe why I haven't been posting. So the number one thing, hang on, before I even say this, I need to take a sip of my pumpkin cold brew that I just made. I found these cute cups at Target and I just made myself a quick little afternoon pick me up. I wanna say a big thank you to AliExpress for sponsoring this week's video. I have been using their fruit and vegetable washing machine. It is a portable automatic ultrasonic washing cleanser capsule. It's wireless and it has a USB port for charging. It's a food purifier for cleansing fruits, vegetables, rice, and meat. Its sterilization effect is 99.9% .9 and its pesticide degradation effect is 90%. So you can be sure that your fruits and vegetables are getting nice and clean. It's super simple to use. You just take it from its charger port, you press the power button, you emerge it in some water in a bowl or a sink and allow it to run for 10 minutes. As a new user of AliExpress, you have one of two great offers you can choose from. As a new user, you can purchase from specific products for only one penny for your first order. Or you can select from high dollar items that are marked under $50. Either way, you're going to get an excellent deal and you will love all of the unique products AliExpress has to offer. So, I needed to that step to say, we have officially started school. So I have three little people in school <laughs> and I'm actually overwhelmingly grateful that they are very close in age. If you guys don't know, our daughters are each a year apart and right now they are five, six, and seven. So we are in those learning stages where everything is completely new. There's a lot of basics being taught and I am homeschooling them. So. We have started school. I'm gonna say it again, deep breath. We've officially started school and we're a couple of weeks in, so that is why I haven't been filming the last little bit. Um, reason one, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons, but that's the biggest one. I really wanted to get us grounded in a good homeschool routine and just really have a good footing on how we wanted to do school every day and that sort of thing. So Everly is in first grade this year and Kalia and Hazley are both doing kindergarten together. They love being together and they love just working at the same things. They were both ready for it and so I decided to go ahead and have them kind of in the same grade. So we're gonna try it for now obviously as the years go on if there it needs to be a separation in that We will do that but right now they're loving working together on the same stuff I'm not gonna go into great detail about homeschooling or curriculum in this video But let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more about that type of content I know in the past you all have requested that a lot so we will get there So besides school the girls have just been keeping up with some of their little responsibilities around the house and just getting in a new ebb and flow with school involved with all of our other tasks and things we do around the house. So besides school, we have also been doing a lot of the seasonal canning. If you're completely new around here, I do a lot of meal prepping and I also do a lot of meal, meal, 
food preservation. So basically I do a lot of canning and freezing. We have three deep freezers and a lot of canned goods. So in the past two weeks, we've been kind of wrapping up gardening like you saw in the beginning of this video. We have a garden that is shared with some of my siblings and their spouses and my parents. It's on my parents' property. We don't really have room here at this house to have a garden and it just made it a little bit easier for us to all kind of share the responsibility. I will admit everyone that has been involved in the garden, their lives have been very chaotic and the tail end of the season, the garden does not look nice and weed free. It's very weedy. So we've just been going and just getting the harvest out of the weeds. So we've had a lot of tomatoes. So one of the things I focused on was making tomato soup. I found an amazing recipe. I will link it below because I did find the core of the recipe on Pinterest and then I did my own tweaking to make it more how we would like it. So my first batch of tomato soup actually burnt. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I was sharing about it there. And then I found out that the easiest way to cook tomatoes without them burning to the bottom of the pan is to actually do it in my pressure cooker. So most people call them Instapots. That's a brand name of pressure cooker. Mine is just a different brand and it is a 10 quart pressure cooker. So I'm able to put around 10 pounds of tomatoes in there at a time. And then I put them through my Victorian strainer and we are still in the midst of doing tomato soup. I actually have a ton of tomatoes in the freezer that are waiting to be made into soup, but we've got some other things that's going on this week that I need to just push those off for a few more weeks so that's one thing you can do when you have a garden is freeze your tomatoes if you are overwhelmed by too many other things another huge canning project that I had going on this past week was pears and I think if I'm remembering correctly I ended up with about 20 no I'm sorry 40 two quarts of pears. And I know you might think that sounds crazy, but when you have children that love fruit and love pears, <laughs> that's actually a great amount of pears for a year, especially whenever you wanna use the pears to make fruit slush or you wanna use them in yogurt. There's lots and lots of uses for pears, just like peaches. I did peaches a few weeks ago and I got an amazing deal on some really delicious pears. So it's really simple to whip them up, water bath can them, and have them on the shelf for up to two years. To be honest, besides homeschooling and canning, we've also just been keeping up with the house and working on different projects, a lot of things that are going to be coming up on my home channel as well. And this past weekend, Corey and I went to our first professional football game. It was such a fun experience. I shared a little bit about it on my Instagram and it was just crazy. I've never been in a place with that many people at one time. It was a fun experience. It's not necessarily a place I would want to take my children, but maybe one day when they're adults they can experience it for themselves. I kind of don't think we will ever go to another one again, but it was kind of a once in a lifetime situation for us. We went with my brother and his wife and had so much fun with them. So today, I actually started the day out by getting up and canning some chicken broth. I had 10 chickens I had bought actually like back in April or something like that of this year at a local market that I got a really good deal on. And I'm finally getting around to actually making them into chicken broth and shredded chicken to can because I'm trying to clear out my freezer space right now. My freezers were really full of a bunch of like project stuff, things that I needed to get to, like those tomatoes I just shoved in there. <laughs> but I am slowly working on getting them cleaned out because tomorrow I'm doing a huge Costco trip with my mom and my sister-in-laws. I'm might film some of that for my next video. I'm not sure. If you guys like Costco hauls, let me know in the comments because I will definitely give you guys one of those. Um, so I, because I want to get some things there that will go into the freezers, that has been part of my projects this week is getting those chickens all cooked up. I'm over halfway through them and I'm about ready to take another two out of my big cooker and can up that and put another set of chickens back into the cooker. So you guys may see me do that today. Right now, 
the girls are actually over at my mom's spending some time with her. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to take you guys with me and just kind of show you what I'm doing this afternoon. Before I drop them off at my mom's though, we had went to a local housewares, I almost wanna say hardwares, but that's not the right word, housewares store that is not that far from us that I don't go to often enough. Every time I go in there, I kind of remind myself I really need to come in here more regularly because there's different things that I could buy there for a good price and support a small business instead of buying it on Amazon. But somehow in the process of the canning and grilling season and all of that, we were down to one paring knife in our house. And if you are a person that cooks, you know that paring knives are very important, especially whenever you're canning and freezing. So that was my main purpose in going in there and I left with a lot more. So I'm gonna take you guys out to the kitchen and show you a little haul of the things that I got. I shouldn't even say little. It was a lot of stuff. In my opinion, it's, it was a pretty good haul. So I found a lot of great things. I will say this before I even show you all what the goodies that I found or before we start meal prepping anything because I do want to prep a couple things today if I can get to it. Um, I will do my best to link the things if I can find them. If you don't find the link in the description box, that means it might be something that was like specifically special to this store and I couldn't find it online. So that may be the case with a few of these things. Before I show you my uh, housewares haul, I thought I would do a quick little sneak at the chickens and making the chicken broth. I love being able to load this thing up and get I get about six quarts of chicken broth out of this and then each chicken makes about a quart of shredded chicken canned. And I know that this cooker is not the most aesthetically pleasing, beautiful thing, but it does the job. It's actually my mom's and I borrow it from her. She's got a couple of them, but it's amazing and can make so much more than just a simple little crock pot could. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some of the stuff that I got or most of the stuff that I got. Also, the mess behind me is the reality of homeschooling and food preserving happening all at the same time. It's chaotic. It's chaotic, but I decided, you know what? I think that I need to bring some realness into what this time of year can look like for mamas that are in my shoes. So the afternoon sun is coming in. So if you see all kinds of lighting, that's what's going on. So this houseware store, I'm not going to give the exact location. However, a bunch of you from this area are gonna know what store I'm talking about. But this houseware store has a lot of things. Everything you can think of from kitchen gadgets to brooms and mops to canning um, tools to uh, hand towels. They have an entire aisle of like hand towels and washcloths and all of the linens and things you would need for your kitchen. They have bed sheets, they have books, they have homeschool um, books and curriculum and things that help you with that. They've got storage, food storage containers, just everything, absolutely everything that is home related and homemaking related. So I'm not really gonna go in any specific order. Um, I'm just gonna grab stuff and show you what all I got. So like I said, the main reason I went in there is to get paring knives and they have these in bins. They have like a display knife and then you just get it out of the bin and I haven't opened them up yet, but I got two smaller paring knives that are actually really, really tinily, tinily, is that a word? I don't know, but a very small serrated edge on it. And then I got a new bread knife because the one I had initially gotten a while back was like a very cheap one and it's starting to rust, which I don't really want that going into our food. So this is a much more high quality bread knife. And then because it is getting into fall and I'm going to be making more pies, plus I really want to start practicing making more pies. I think that it's such an art and they're so yummy. Um, I grabbed a good pie serving knife i'm not exactly sure maybe it says it right on here pie server a serrated pie server so you can easily cut the piece of pie and scoop it out with this thing along the lines of serving i also grabbed two more serving spoons just for our things whenever we're eating dinner at the table whenever we need to scoop corn and things like that and scoops speaking of scoops I got this scoop to scoop ice. Our refrigerator here does not have a ice maker, 
so we tend to buy ice in really big bags um, I do have ice trays but it's just easier to spend like the dollar or so and get a nice big bag of ice and then we have ice for a long time especially for iced coffees and things like that but one of the problems I've been having is sometimes they freeze in a big chunk and once the bag is ripped open, it's a little hard to like throw the bag on the ground and try to smash up the ice. So I'm hoping that this thing helps me. It has like a very flat edge and kind of pointy sides to where you can kind of pick at the ice and be able to scoop the ice out. And while we were in the section where they have a bunch of scoops, the girls reminded me that they would like to have a scoop for Zaley's food. Zaley is our dog and it's their responsibility to feed her and give her water. So I grabbed a nice little cheese scoop because they said that they don't like their hands to smell like dog food after they feed her which I don't blame them I didn't really think of it I guess the thing that I have their dog food in I generally pick up if I'm feeding her and just dump it in but maybe it's a little harder for them to do that so sometimes they end up using their hands I guess and so this will work a lot better for them. A while back, I had picked up some glass measuring pitchers at Ikea, and they were a really, really thin glass. And one of them, a couple days ago, Corey was mixing something up and it just cracked, and so I decided I need to get myself a good quality set of glass um, measuring pitchers. So I got this one, which is one quart, which is four cups, and quart having something that can measure a quart, so you automatically think it's a quart, is really nice, especially whenever it comes to canning. And then along with that, and it's just an anchor hawking um, pitcher. You can get these on Amazon. I will link them below if I can find ones that are this exact sizes. And so then I also got one that is a two cup and one that is a one cup. So if we are mixing barbecue sauce for the grill, which is how the other one got broken. He won't have to worry about being ginger with these. They're very tough. They're pretty much as thick, if not a little bit thicker than a canning jar. And I have dropped so many canning jars on the floor and have really never had too many break on me. Another thing that this houseware store has a lot of is children's toys. And they have a lot of wooden children's toys, which I think is really, really neat. One of the things that the girls requested we get for their play kitchen, which is pretty important to them, is a little rolling pin. Kalia was pretty adamant, mom, we need a rolling pin for our kitchen. Apparently they are planning to do some cutout cookies or something. <laughs> So they really wanted to have this. Something that I have looked at on Amazon and I just have felt like we're really overpriced is a maple syrup dispenser. I do get maple syrup and I kind of repackage it into smaller jars just so that we can seal them and then be able to just use them in smaller quantities. A lot of times I buy maple syrup in large quantities like by the gallon and so I put it into smaller jars. So we've just been dumping our maple syrup out of a jar and it really has been a pain because a lot of times the lid on the jar starts to stick really bad from the maple syrup and I just couldn't justify spending a lot on a syrup dispenser like a lot of the ones on Amazon but this one here I think was at under five dollars I don't know it was only a couple dollars and it's just like those ones that you see at the restaurant and I'm hoping that this solves our problem with the sticky lid and I can just kind of fill this up as we need it. Plus it will be so much easier for the girls to just pull back on it and drizzle maple syrup across their pancakes or waffles. Yes, I did grab glass measuring pitchers, but I also grabbed two more of these. I had two that I started out with last year and I don't exactly know what happened to them. I know one of them got some kind of acidic liquid in it and it ate away at the plastic, which of course I threw that out immediately. Um, <laughs> But these are super handy, especially whenever it comes to canning. If you are taking something, say you're like canning baked beans or something like that, you know, you can scoop into your pot or your cooker or whatever you're gonna be using and be able to pour it into your jar. So having two of them, especially if you are have a helper or you're doing canning with someone else is very handy. So the project for this next week, and again, I plan to film it or at least film portions of it, is we are doing grape juice. I'm picking up eight boxes of grape juice tomorrow morning, super, super early before we go to Costco. And my sister-in-law is actually also going to be doing grape juice with me. And along with the grape juice, I asked the girls if they would like to have some grape juice jelly. 
Do we need grape jelly? Probably not because I have so, I don't even know. We're not even gonna go into how much jelly I have downstairs, but it's a lot. I did blueberry and I did strawberry and it was a lot. <laughs> so I'm basically doing grape jelly just because I wanna try it. I've never done it before and um, it would just be a fun project to do along with the grape juice. So I grabbed this jelly strainer set. It's just a little thing that you set up and it has a bag in it and you cook the grapes and then you just put the grapes in here and they drip down into a bowl. And I think it's going to make it really easy to make grape jelly. You just add your pectin in, put it in the jars, you water bath can it and it is done. All right, so like I said, they do have a lot of a huge variety of things and one thing I've been on the hunt for is a really really good mop and this here is from a company called Troy craft I believe that the person that was at the store told me that these are made in Ohio and they are a small business and I th love supporting small businesses plus my mother-in-law has had a mop like this for years and she really really likes it so I decided to go ahead and make the plunge and buy it. It was pretty pricey, but in my experience, a lot of times a pricier mop means that it works well. So the what comes with it or what you use with it are these little pads. And as you can see, they look very homemade, but they seem very, very durable. They've been searched and I think that they will hold together really well. Plus I know where I can get more, obviously going to the store there. And you can use them with all kinds of cleaners. I'm excited to try this out. And these are also super convenient to wash your walls and your ceilings kind of as a duster as well as a mop for the floor. Okay, so like I said, they have a lot of toys and learning materials and something that Hazley, my youngest, is really into is puzzles. And I'm going to be honest, I don't have any puzzles. They did when they were a lot younger, but we lost so many pieces and I just haven't repurchased puzzles since they've kind of been old enough to be doing puzzles. And I know that she does puzzles a lot at my mom's house and my mother-in-law's house. So I decided we need to start our own little puzzle collection. So this one is a fun one that is 27 pieces and it's like a large puzzle that she can do on the floor. Plus it's an alphabet train and we are really trying to drill in those letters right now. So I thought that this would be really nice for her and I had Hazley pick this out herself. They had a bunch of different ones there. Along with their children's books and other things, they have Bibles and devotionals and a lot of other like cookbooks, a huge cookbook area. So I was looking through them. I am a big sucker for cookbooks. I love, love, love cookbooks. So I got this one, which I'm most excited about. And then I got this one. This one here is called the Practical Produce Cookbook. I'm really excited to look into this because I feel like it's going to give me a lot of recipes to use some of the canned goods and things that I have been canning. Plus it gives you ideas for canning, it has like canning recipes in it. And I love cookbooks that are kind of old timey and there's a lot of cookbooks that are made by the Mennonite and the Amish. And I have a Mennonite background and my husband has a Mennonite and Amish background. Our parents, I've said that before, but I just thought I would say it again. Um, so I love getting my hands on these types of books. And this book is also like that as well. This one is called A Housewife's Handy Reference Book. And this book is really neat. In fact, I think this would be an amazing wedding gift to anyone. If I can find it online, I'm going to link it below because it has traditional canning methods in it. It has housekeeping. It has things like how to take care of chickens, how to cut pieces of meat the correct way. I know. Again, it might sound a little bit old timey, but it's also a lot of things that I feel like in our modern day and age, we don't talk about a lot or we just don't have a lot of information on because it was things that was taught through word of mouth from mothers to daughters. So I feel like this is almost like from a mother to a daughter handbook kind of thing. It's really, really unique and neat and I've really enjoyed just looking through it today and I can't wait to look through more of it. All right, I'm just gonna zip through some of these last couple things. I got a potato masher. It's been forever since I've had a potato masher and the other day I was in desperate need of one just whipping up some easy mashed potatoes. So I got a good potato masher. I got a pastry blender again to be making pie crusts. I know I said that already, but that's why I got this. 
and I somehow haven't had one of these for years and they're very very convenient but it's called an egg and mushroom slicer it also works for bananas and other things like that and just soft things kiwis stuff like that where you can put it in and slice it really easily I grabbed a baker's quarter sheet I actually already have one of these but I'm really trying to perfect a good whole wheat dough that we enjoy and I want to make whole wheat rolls and it just would be easier to be able to double the batch or do a batch that does two pans and be able to pop them in at the same time. So I grabbed another one of those. I have two five gallon buckets of potatoes from our garden that are sitting out in the garage ready to be processed. I'm going to be dicing them and canning them. That's just what we like to do with our potatoes. And I needed a potato brush, so I have that. I grabbed this because I have a bunch of eggs and our chickens. We also have chickens at my parents' house. We have bought them, I don't know how old they are now. They might be five months old now. So they're starting to lay. We are getting about five eggs a week right now, which means that about five of the hens are starting to lay. And um, anyways, so I'm going to have a lot of eggs soon. So I thought this tool might be a little bit helpful. It is called an egg separator and you just crack the egg in there and it helps to keep the yolk and the egg separated without having to like make sure you're not catching eggshells and all of that. And we have been needing a like skinny bottle brush. So this thing has a big end here and a smaller end here. Just an easy thing to clean different bottles and things we have around the house. Along with making um, dinner rolls, I got this dough scraper to be able to just cut into my dough a little bit easier. Most of the time I just grab it and twist and pull it apart but this will be nice for certain things. The girls needed this little thing just to help sweep up dog food and stuff like that. And then the last thing I got was a cherry pitter and I know it's not really cherry season. However, we do have a few markets in our area that even in the winter time sometimes find really good deals on certain things like cherries, like uh, blueberries this past year in March. They had blueberries that were from California that were like a dollar for a box and they looked amazing and to me if it's something that I can get especially buying through a small market local to me that they may have shipped them in from somewhere else but it still benefits that small store and it benefits me because I'm getting them at a really good price. I'm totally okay with that even though it's not from a local farm. So I do like to keep everything on hand that I need to do most normal preserving and one of those things I did not get to do this year was cherries. So I wanted to have a cherry pitter on hand in case somewhere along the line even before next summer somebody gets some good cherries in and I can get a good deal on them and we can do up some of our own cherries. So that is everything I got. I know this is a little unusual for me. I used to do a lot of hauls and things like this but I just have gotten out of the loop with it and I am really ready to just bring you guys along in what I'm doing in life even if it's a little messy, even if it's not perfect, even if I am long-winded. <laughs> If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it, but I'm just here to kind of chat about the things that I've got going on in life and be an encouragement to other homemakers. So I think I'm going to put this stuff away and I'm going to check on the temperature of those chickens, see if they're almost done. I have two more that were frozen this morning that Kylia and I brought up from the freezer and I'm not sure how thawed they are, if they're ready to go in for the next batch. And you can see Corey's lunchbox is sitting back here. He got home early and we grabbed, went and grabbed lunch together. That's actually why the girls ended up at my mom's house. But she just decided to keep them because my grandparents are visiting for a few hours just to give me a little head start on getting some things done this afternoon. All right, so I decided to let the chickens cook a little bit longer. I kind of overcooked them a little bit, not in a bad way just to make sure that the broth is really rich and delicious so I'm going to let that as is and I'm actually going to run to the UPS store and grab some boxes to package up and I need bubble wrap also but to package up the items that I gave away in this month's giveaway on my Instagram so 
I'm going to, it has a couple glass items, so I need to have something to package it well. And as much as I really want to go with like really cute tissue paper and make the packages fun this month, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think I'm just gonna package it all up and get it sent off to the winners. And I'm so excited to start doing this every single month, just giving away things that, that are my favorites, just to give a nice thank you to my viewers and followers on Instagram. I'm gonna get everything packaged up and I doubt I'll get it all mailed out today, but at least I can get it ready to go because it's been a little bit since I have announced the winners of the giveaway and I need to get it rolling so that I'm not rolling into next month's giveaway and mailing out two months worth of stuff. All right, I've got my three boxes over here for my three winners from the giveaway all packed up and ready to be labeled and shipped off to them. And then right here, I pulled off my cooker. I already pulled out the chicken that's cooling so I can actually shred it and get it ready for just canning shred chick shredded chicken. And then this here is the broth. So I put carrots and celery and onion and some parsley in here along with some seasoning, you know, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, those sorts of things. So I don't really want all of the little pieces of chicken and stuff floating around in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually strain it out. I have a strainer right in here. And then I just put this cheesecloth over the top because I really do want it to look nice and clear um, when I'm gonna put it in a soup or something like that. So I'm gonna use one of my little plastic pitchers that I got today to do that and then it's going to go right into my jars and I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and I like to scoop out a little of the fat that comes to the top and then I go ahead and can it up. All right, the jars you just saw me load, I did just put in the canner. It's getting up to heat, all of that, but I thought this was kind of a nice representation of my little system I'm doing. So I'm about to put these in. I need to fill this up with water and then they will just go in overnight and be slow cooking all night long, making wonderful broth, making wonderful shredded chicken. I just got these two out of the freezer to thaw overnight. So in the morning when these come out, these will go in to be in all day tomorrow, kind of going in cycles here. And then these are actually some that I did last night um, and they're already canned and I just need to wash the jars. So this is what it looks like whenever you're completely finished and you have wonderful chicken broth for soups, whatever recipes you want to use it for. And I didn't have fresh parsley. I actually need to get that at Costco tomorrow. And I didn't have fresh parsley, so I used some dried. I used up the rest of my dried parsley because I need to pick up some more at Costco tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and just kind of get these washed down and keep the system rolling. All right, if my hair doesn't say that I got some stuff done today, I don't know what does. <laughs> I just looked in the viewfinder in my camera and I was like, wow, wow. 
but I got all of that chicken shredded up. Obviously, the other batch is in the canner. The chickens, raw chickens, are in the cooker to cook all night long and make us some yummy broth. And I'm actually sitting down on the office floor to drink the rest of my electrolytes, which is super important. I drink lots of electrolytes. It's just a good way to be hydrated. And since we have town water, we use a Berkey filter, which I love our Berkey filter. Um, and I filter all of my water for canning and all of that through that. Um, but Berkey filters tend to remove a lot of minerals. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just a water filter. But since it cleans the water, you wanna replace some. So I do actually have mineral rocks in the bottom of our Berkey filter that helps to replace minerals, but also to supplement that, we drink a lot of electrolytes. So anyways, I'm here getting those in and I'm trying to kind of mentally prepare for our day tomorrow. I know I mentioned a lot of it earlier, but just getting the girls up, I got them tucked into bed. They had a, a church event tonight, so they just got back from that. And I know I'm gonna have to get them up very, very early. We're probably gonna have to be up by five tomorrow morning, which I try to be up between six and seven pretty much every morning, um, but five's a little bit of a stretch even for me. So it's gonna be an, a busy morning of getting them up, getting them ready to go. We have to go get the grapes, bring the grapes home. I'm probably gonna have to put them in air conditioning because they're not gonna be processed tomorrow. They'll be processed the next day. And then go meet my mom and my sister-in-laws and we will all drive to Costco. It's about an hour from where we live. So it just, we make a big trip out of it generally and all go as a family. And my parents have a really big, um, van that a lot of people can ride in. We usually kind of take another vehicle too so that we can take some of the seats out of the big van to put our Costco haul in, which is a lot because it's me plus, it would technically be five families. Five families, yeah, because that's me and I have three brothers and so it's all their wives and then of course my parents. So that would include five families. So it's five families worth of Costco if that gives you a picture. So what I am doing is I, because I, we do this every once in a while, I'm out of certain things that I did, that I got last time. And there's some other things that I don't need to replenish right now. But what I like to do is I like to go on my phone and use the Walmart app and sometimes the Aldi app, depending on what it is. And I like to price check things because a lot of times Sam's Club and Costco, we go to both of them, but we tend to like Costco a little bit better. Um, but sometimes their stuff can seem like a better deal because it looks like a large quantity of something, but ultimately per ounce, it's actually a better deal at Aldi or Walmart. So I like to kind of compare prices just to make sure that I'm not overpaying for something just because of the amping up. Sorry, I closed the door and if you hear some whining, Zaylee is over there. The girls are in bed and she's feeling lonely and she knows that I'm awake yet. So anyway, you get what I'm saying. Sometimes they can kind of amp up something just because it's at Costco or because it's Kirkland, which is Costco's brand. So I'm just doing a little bit of price checking. And what I'm also probably going to do is the things that I really need to stock up on that are not as good of a price at Costco. I'm gonna make a Walmart order pickup for the following morning. So then I'm still stocking up everything at the same time, but I can just go in and get what I need at pickup. They'll get have it ready for me and I don't need to worry about shopping for that stuff tomorrow at Costco. So I know that was a really long ramble, but just some little tips and tricks on how I do our Costco shopping. So that being said, I'm hoping to vlog our Costco trip tomorrow. We will see, depends on if I wake up and how things are going with the girls. That's kind of where I'm at with my videos on this channel. You all know I have another channel that is very home oriented and home organization oriented. Sorry, my camera card ran out of space. But what I was saying is I just want this channel to be a place where I can post as I want to, kind of 
maybe film clips bits and pieces and put them together and just give you a little picture into my normal everyday life and a lot of it is surrounded around cooking and food just simply because we cook a lot of things from scratch and we like to eat things that are healthy we eat very i like to jokingly say we eat very old-fashioned because this is how a lot of people ate even 50 years ago where they are eating a lot of home canned foods and just meats and veggies and fruit and homemade bread and things like that so a lot of that takes a lot of preparation and just thought and planning so anyways i know that i haven't been doing a whole lot of the real meal prepping videos and i probably will be doing that again soon but in between I'm just showing you all the other aspects of what it takes to cook and prep from scratch. So anyways, I think I'm going to close this video out. I'm so glad that you could spend time with me today and I am looking forward to some of the projects I have coming up here on this channel. I am thinking about doing a um, long-term food storage pantry tour that was super long but you get what I'm saying basically showing you how I organize and store a lot of my canned goods and things like that we have a very nice basement area in our house that we have a lot of shelving in and we house a lot of that stuff there so I'm considering doing a little tour of that I'm not sure yet and I don't know if it would be on this channel or on my home channel maybe let me know in the comments what do you think do you think that a tour of something like that would be more appropriate for this channel since it is more food oriented or like cooking oriented or would it be more appropriate for my home channel since it's part of my home and it's part of organizing my home I have been a little bit stuck on that. If I do it, I'm still debating on whether or not I want to do it just for different reasons. But if I do it, what do you guys think would be more appropriate? So um, I don't even know where that thought came from, but it's just something I've been thinking about. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad that you came to hang out with me today. And I hope that you left inspired or a little bit encouraged or just uplifted. And I hope that somehow I can be a light in your life. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hang around. I love having you all watch and hearing your comments and your feedback. Also give this video a like and I will see you guys in my next video.